What was your name again? And then you told me. I'm not going to this with you anymore, so I'll tell you what happens next. If you continue to commit the offense of trespassing, it is an arrestable offense, and I can arrest you and remove you from the property. Nobody's Sir? trying to touch your phone. Just can you please let go of me? Please let go of me. I don't want to. Do I need to put you in touch no. and identify yourself? Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Hamilton, Ontario. And folks, I'm with Kyle Turcott. Kyle has a medical exemption for wearing face masks. And he found out the hard way recently here at the Fortino supermarket that apparently there are retailers that believe their corporate policy trumps the rule of law. Just will you hear this story. So, Kyle, you have shopped here in the past at Fortino's. Uh, you've gone in maskless. There's been no problem. But recently you came here and you got into a tiff with the manager. First of all, we should point out that although you're not required to show proof of a medical ex exemption, you do have a bona fide medical exemption. There, There is an issue with your nose. Is that correct? Yes, yes there is. And I have a medical note that I carry with me on my phone to show anybody that puts up as much of a hassle as I was given. And again, you are not required to prove that medical exemption. I mean, it's akin to somebody getting out of a car with a handicap permit and saying, uh, listen, can you prove you can't walk? But nevertheless, you went above and beyond that. You had a discussion with the manager. He did not want you in the store without any kind of face covering. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Then. Um, he basically told me that I was not allowed to enter and unless I had a mask on or face shield and I did not have a face shield with me or a mask and it just kind of went from there we talked civilly for a bit the cops got called and they showed up and it progressed from there I was asked to leave by the cops I never refused or anything and long story short they like arrested me for not having a mask and refusing to give them my name because they weren't detaining me or anything so mm. And, and, you know, we so before we get to the police encounter, Kyle, let, let's throw to a clip. You Once you saw the conversation with the manager going sideways, you decided to get your cell phone out, record this. So let's just check out a little excerpt of the conversation. Now you're trying to make false claims. So I'm just going to record everything from here on out. What was your name again? No. Public. Can I get your name again, please? Since you're uh, management here. Now, Kyle, you also told me off camera that you suffer from Tourette syndrome, uh, and that means when you get into a stressful situation, you might raise your voice, you might uh, use profanity. It, it, it's not really something you can control. Um, and I imagine that was a stressful situation. You just wanted to go in, grab some items, leave, and you were getting all this hassle. Yes, that is correct. I just came to pick up some groceries, did not intend to have as much of a confrontation as there was. And yeah, if I get stressed out or anything like that, I do, my, my, I'll raise my voice and like talk or swear sometimes and it's not intentional and it's not meant to be aggressive or anything it's something i can't help so and it should be pointed out you were in the right i mean the bylaw does state that if you have a medical exemption and you went above and beyond by proving you had a medical exemption uh you uh, are not required to wear a face mask how did it escalate um to the point where the manager thought i better call the police on you we were standing there talking, and then he kept saying, you know, I'm not going to let you in. I said, well, I don't think that's very fair, um, considering I'm following your policy as by the, the signs that I've seen on the doors and everything. You know, I have the medical exemption. I believe that I wasn't doing anything wrong. i just come to get groceries. And it just went from there, and apparently when he walked away from me at the one point, cops were called, I guess. So huh. I'm not certain beyond that and then uh, we were civilly talking and then that, that you and the police um, or, me and him the entire time until the cops showed up we were talking civilly and everything and then he 
had made a <clears throat> comment that I didn't think was very good. So that's when I pulled my phone out and started recording um, because I wanted everything kept on the up and up. I had done nothing wrong. I didn't want to be seen as an aggressor or anything. So, and, and when the police got here, Kyle, how would you describe your encounter with them? Uh, initially, it was kind of okay. One of the officers was um, nicer than the other, to say the least. The other one was a bit more aggressive. Um, throughout the entire encounter, we were talking. Uh, he gave me time to talk. I tried to give him time to talk, but I think I did interject a couple times. It wasn't intentional. It was kind of just because I got excited and I my Tourette's acted up, to say the least. Mm. And yeah. So, um, and certainly um, it, it got a little heated there, and I believe we have some footage that you shot of that encounter. Let's just throw a clip of that right now. You're now trespassing. How? I just explained that to you. No, you didn't. You gave me the technical definition, but I asked you how I am right now doing that. Oh, you're trespassing? Yes. You've been asked to leave, and you haven't left. He never once asked me to leave, actually. Okay. Not once. I'm telling you to leave now. So are you planning on leaving? I don't believe that this is a fair outcome for this. Okay, so now you're trespassing. How? Because I just told you to leave. And you are still standing on the property. You Yes, and I also just asked you... That's entrapment right there. What well, you just did. I asked you for a definition, and okay. then you, you literally goaded me okay. into asking and so in a manner, and then you told me... I'm not going to this with you anymore, so I'll, I'll tell you what happens next. If you continue to commit the offense of trespassing, it is an arrestable offense, and I can arrest you and remove you from the property. I don't want to do that. I'd like to just walk out of here with you and do that. I don't know how you sleep at night. Same with you. Nobody's Sir? trying to touch your phone. Just can you lie. please let go of me? Please let go of me. I don't want to. Do I need to put you in touch no. and identify yourself. Why do, why do I have to? Why do I have to identify myself to you, sir? Okay. Sir, can you hold on, please? Wait. Under the trespass to property, can you, you please have not to identify yourself. I actually have very bad problems with my body right now that I'm getting readjusted. Okay. So can you please stop twisting my wrist? It hurts. Are you going to identify yourself? Why do you need my uh, my name and stuff like that? I've done nothing wrong. You're trespassing I'm leaving. and you're failing no. to identify. Okay. Sir, sir, what are you doing? Can you please let go of my phone? No, what, dude, okay, how am I under arrest? I look. Okay, I will tell you my name. Right now you're under arrest and then we'll deal with it. Sir, sir, please. Uh, you're hurting me. Nothing you're you're accommodating. You are hurting me. God says. Oh. That's mine. Ma'am, ma'am. Ma oh. That is mine, please. Oh, sorry, I thought that made Can you please not do this, sir? There we go. I don't want to do this. I, I gave you every option. I'm asking you. I, I followed well, what you were past that point. Sir, I'm going to walk over to my car and have another conversation. Yeah, so it, it, it didn't really go that well. You were, um, uh, you were also saying off camera, you were manhandled a bit by the police, weren't you? Yes. Uh, when I was leaving the premises after they asked me to leave, um, I had went to walk out the doors and the one officer grabbed from my arm as I was leaving and told me that he, I had to give them my name or I was going to be under arrest. And he continued to try to reef my arm behind my back and I had my phone in my hand. I um, accidentally stopped my recording, so I was working on trying to get that restarted when a third officer came out of nowhere and snatched my phone clean out of my hand. And at that point, I kind of freaked out a little bit. I'm like, what are you doing? Which you'll also be able to see in the video. And then I completely complied. I never like full out refused or anything. But I was com like complicit, and I still got put in the cuffs. They put the cuffs on way too tight. I couldn't feel my hands. I got put, put handcuffs on you. Yeah, they put handcuffs on me, put me in the back of the cruiser, uh, emptied my coat of all my belongings, my gloves, my wallet, my keys, every everything like that, put it all on top of the car along with my phone, and at one point said um, I asked if they could flip my phone over so that it would be clearer for the recording, they said they're not touching my phone, and then a couple minutes later, which I was already in the cruiser at this time, um, my phone gets picked up and turned off. So. Well, I'm, I'm sorry that happened to you. In fact, it would have been, how much better would it have been if the police had said to the manager, hey, listen, under the bylaw, he's got a right to shop here, but clearly they don't understand the nuances of the bylaw that they are indeed enforcing. Um, at the end of the day, your parting gift, shall we say, was a ticket. What was that ticket for, Kyle? The ticket was for trespassing. Uh, 
came out to be about $65, which, again, was not intended. Literally came to pick up some groceries. I know that amount well, folks. I got a $65 trespassing ticket last year, as you know, for going to a Brampton hockey rink uh, to check out sneaky Patrick Brown uh, playing hockey uh, illegally. But that's another story. Um, You know, that's a shame. And you also showed me a letter you've received from the company. You cannot go in. Fortino's, it should be known, is owned by Loblaws. You remember Loblaws, folks. Uh, The last time we brought you a a Loblaws story, it was about how they were taking, I think it was $14 million in tax money to buy new refrigerators because a multi-billion dollar corporation like Loblaws sure needs a handout from us, doesn't it? And you, um, Kyle, have been banned for six months from going into any Loblaws properties. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Well, you know, we can't help you uh, with the, the law of laws, Ben. It is private property, but we can indeed help you with that $65 trespass ticket. I, I personally think it's egregious. Uh, I think you got the wrong end of the stick. So we're going to take you on as our latest Fight the Fines candidate. We are going to get you a top-notch criminal lawyer. We are going to crowdfund your legal fees. You don't have to worry about going to court. You don't have to worry about paying uh, legal fees. What do you think about that, Kyle? That's pretty fantastic. I appreciate that a lot. Okay, then. Where are you going to do your grocery shopping now? Uh, well, clearly not here. <laughs> so somewhere else. <laughs> yes, clearly not here. And I guess, you know, it's funny, folks, isn't it? The, the authorities are saying buy local. Really, should we be shopping local that when you go to a grocery store like Kyle did and you want to buy some food items and what do you end up with? Getting um, police handsy on you being put in cuffs, being put in a police cruiser, and then getting a parting gift of a $65 trespass ticket, and then this ridiculous notice that you're banned from the building for six months. That is egregious. I think clearly Loblaws, like so many other retailers uh, that we've profiled in the last several months, believes its own corporate policy trumps the rule of the land, and that is not the case. So we're going to bat for Kyle, and I think Loblaws is going to learn the hard way that they too, despite their stature, despite all their billions of dollars, they too have to obey the law. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, have you been, I don't know, harassed, bullied, beaten and fined just for going to the local supermarket to pick up some groceries? Well, if that is the case, please reach out to us at fightthefines.com. That's fightthefines.com. If we think your story has merit, we will take up your case. We will put you in touch with a top-notch criminal lawyer, and we will crowdfund your legal fees.